Hi, this is a short video lecture to introduce you to the building blocks of theory. This is an overview of the conceptualization of what theory is and how we're going to use this conceptualization to break down the different theories we're going to cover in, during the semester in order to understand the what, the how, the why and the when, where, who of when theory is applied. So these ideas on theory come from Baturgi, let me try that again, Baturgi <laughs> Um, 2012. The link is available in the slides which will be also put up onto Wattle. So the theoretical plane that we're talking about includes the abstract ideas of the theories that explain natural or social behavior, an event or a phenomenon. So scientific, scientific theory is a system of constructs, also known as concepts, and propositions, which are the relationships between those concepts, that collectively represent logical and systematic and coherent explanations of a phenomenon. However, these theories or explanations fall within boundaries and also include assumptions. So often what we'll have during the semester is that we have a lot of marketing theory or consumer behavior theories where the assumption is that decisions are made by individuals. So therefore if you're dealing with a household decision, a family decision or a husband and wife making a decision, it means that those theories don't necessarily apply because the boundary conditions of individuality in decision making is not met. So just to as an explanation the difference between scientific versus other types of theories. So a scientific theory is one that we say is provable or falsifiable. So one that needs to be able to be tested and repeatedly tested to be shown to be true. However, people have personal theories during their everyday life. For example, some people have the theory that if you break a mirror, you'll have seven years of bad luck. Also known as a superstition, but still it is a personal theory that people have. Equally, people can say that if they do break a mirror, they then need to throw salt over their shoulder in order to alleviate the bad luck. Again, it's a theory. It's an explanation for why bad luck occurs and it's an explanation for why bad luck can be alleviated. So a theory or a scientific theory of why things happen that you might be familiar with is the Big Bang Theory. So it describes the, the nature of the universe as constantly expanding. It says it's constantly expanding because the universe began as a singularity that exploded and the energy created from that explosion means that all matter is constantly moving away from each other. So this has led to predictions about background radiation, density and temperature. but in terms of its provability, it means that astrophysicists are constantly measuring the distance between objects in the universe and they are constantly being measured as being further away from each other as, as opposed to when they were in the past. So we tend to deal with more socially oriented theories rather than um, uh, physical theories like in physics or astrophysics. So some of the social oriented theories that we are going to come across this semester are theories of decision making, so the theory of bounded rationality. Also the um, rational decision making is a theory, emotional decision making is also a theory. We have theories of the individual, so theories of personality, self-concept theory and attitude theory. 
And then we look at more socially oriented theories of when people are behaving together or being influenced by those around them. So we talk about social class theories, social status theory, and the theories of socialization. In the wider marketing literature, we also deal with theories, so theories of persuasion, branding theory, and service theory. So in, in marketing or in this subject, consumer behavior, what we're interested in is there's two different ways theories can be thought of. Theory in consumer behavior either explains why consumers behave in a certain way or it can explain why a certain marketing application will result in certain types of consumer behavior outcomes. So the building blocks of theory. So this is going to form the template for your weekly activity summaries that you submit on the end of the week after we've done our in-class activities. So in the in-class we'll be applying a theory and then at the end of the week you'll break it down into these four things. Additionally in your uh, market consultancy reports each individual will need to choose a theory and apply these four components to that theory. And just because we have learnt to do this so well over semester, this building blocks will be in your final exam in one way, shape or form. So the four components of theory are the constructs, the propositions, the logic and the boundary conditions or the assumptions. So constructs are the what. So what are we talking about? So basic definitions. So it could be a theory, the construct could be singular, there could be just one thing in the theory. Speed. Price. I'm not sure I'm making things up here. Usually we're talking about things that are multidimensional when it comes to um, socially oriented theories in marketing because individuals and decision making and behavior doesn't happen in a vacuum. For example, our height hardly ever dictates what we will what brand we will buy. So once we have the what, usually the multiple what of what we're talking about, we then need to look at the propositions of how these concepts are related to each other. So these are postulations between constructs. They involve deductive logic. So they tend to be stated as declaratives. And they, and a, a very good theory will have a cause and effect relationship. For example, that good service results in positive satisfaction experiences, which will lead to positive word of mouth and increased likelihood of repeat purchase. So these are propositions between multiple constructs. The logic represents the why. Why are these concepts related? So the logic is the glue. So you can have all sorts of propositions. I can say that, for example, that Dusk precedes dawn, but the logic there is a bit suspect because if you base my logic on our usual way of measuring time, we usually start with dawn being the beginning of the day and dusk being the end of the day. So therefore you could say that my logic is flawed based on common perceptions of time. So logic needs to be show meaning and relevance to the relationships, but it also needs to have some underlying sense to the declaration. And the boundary conditions or assumptions that are made, these include the who, when and where circumstances of when our constructs and propositions will hold in terms of our logic. For example, as previously I've previously stated that in an individual decision making, we can say that a 
positive service experience will lead to increased satisfaction, will lead to increased likelihood of purchase. However, if that consumption experience was done as a group experience, then there are confounding factors where my logic or the propositions that I have made may no longer hold because of other factors affecting that process, such as social norms and the like. So, for example, this is a very brief overview of what you would need to do as part of your weekly theory building template. So this is one we will cover during the semester, so this is a bit of a gimme. So the theory of planned behaviour, which is one of our attitude theories, it comes from Argen 1991 and it says that the constructs of attitudes towards the behaviour, subjective norms, perceived behaviour control, intention and behaviour. Uh, in your submission you should provide a definition of these five things, but I'm being brief. The propositions of this theory is that intention to behave is determined by a person's attitude towards the behaviour, the subjective norm and the perceived behavioural control over that behaviour. So the logic here is that the behaviours are based on one's intention regarding the behaviour. And the assumptions are that our intention to behave are individual conscious decisions that people are making and that the individual behaviour is shaped by cognitive thinking and social pressures. So this is a very long way of saying the following. So this is a pictorial representation of the theory. As you can see here we have our three concepts which are attitude towards behaviour, subjective norm, perceived behavioural control which cause our intention to behave which then causes our actual behaviour. There are extra elements to this theory but I'm just giving you an overview. So that is all I need to do with you today in terms of this video. If you have any extra questions please email me but I'll also be covering this briefly in the first lecture.